and I think HBAR will, committed $360 million to ecosystem projects. Ripple alone committed a quarter billion dollars for their NFT ecosystem. I feel safe in those projects for the long term. I know crypto is volatile. Yeah, it's scary. But hopefully you understand why I'm looking at this because I'm looking for projects that have longevity and real employees. Crypto is helping transform finance businesses today in a few different ways. And I think one of the challenges for the industry has been to focus on solving real problems for real customers. And Ripple, obviously, from its earliest days, focused on the problem around cross-border payments. That's a point of a lot of friction as measured by speed and cost. And by focusing there, we've been able to have a big impact on that you know, relatively small piece. But I think over the next years, you're going to see many financial transactions where a middleman sits, a middle transaction, an intermediary, those will get removed and we'll use blockchain and other digital asset type technologies to, to remove that friction. And I think all of society will benefit from you improving the efficiency of those, those systems. I think you'll see that certainly you've seen it in security settlement as an opportunity. Uh, the, you know, the financial transactions around bonds, around derivatives, a lot of these things take a while to settle and the, the friction associated actually holds back the industry. Insurance is an industry I think you're going to see touched. Uh, trade finance is an industry that really Ripple, some of our customers have invited us to participate in. Uh, and you've seen an experimentation around identity in uh, real estate and title management. And you know, these are all examples where I think it's so hard to predict where this will go in the same way that 25 years ago, when I first got involved in the Internet of Information, I never could have predicted on my smartphone, I'd press a button and I'd have a car picking me up minutes later. You know, I think this will permeate lots of different parts of our society. What's up, guys? Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. Hope everybody's having an awesome day. In today's video, we're going to dive into Algorand, Hedera, XRP, and Casper. We're going to start off with the price charts, then we'll dive into some news for each of these altcoins. So first up, we have the Algo price chart on the left-hand side, and I've been waiting for Algo to go or just make a decision for four to five months. So personally, I've kind of just been a little quiet about it and just waiting for it because when we we're up here at 41 cents, I thought that was when we were going to get the move up to 50 cents, a multi-year key level going back all the way to 2019 you know 50 cents to 51 cent that range all the way across right there is well resistance and I think I have a better picture to show you here's one that I posted on Twitter so this is just a multi-year key level that Algorand has yet to tag and we can see I mean ranging as low as like 27 28 cents and remember XRP was at like 28 cents went up to 50 cents plus Casper was under 3 cents at like 2.8 cents 2.5 cents and went up to 5 cents plus so I'm looking for a very similar move for algo it has been a very long and choppy road Tweeted this in October, FIFA World Cup, November 20th, Algo is only at 31 cents. And if it follows similar moves to XRP and Casper, we can say hello to 50 cents. And once again, this is not financial advice. This is just one little confluence I'm looking at at the chart. So I still believe that Algo and HBAR are laggards. It's going to be decision time. We're either going to make or break. And personally, Bitcoin has been ranging for hundreds of days. Bitcoin has two choices. We're either going to crash down to 14K and retest that level that has never really been tested yet again. And then I'll be buying some alts. And that's not financial advice. I'm only buying the ones that I have the highest level of conviction with, including Algo, HBAR, Casper, XRP. Those four at these prices are my biggest holdings. I love QNT. I'm wishing it well. I just don't want to buy anything after it's on a 5x and I was snagging QNT at three to five dollars so I'm just much more interested in some alts that have yet to really move I know XRP and Casper got a little push up and Algo and HBAR Algo got a little one HBAR hasn't done much they both all four of these assets have gaps above and gaps below so just to emphasize QNT using the March April high Fibonacci and I know we've been doing this for months at this point June July all the way since this low drawing this fib and talking about different levels and I had no idea that QNT was going first I had no idea it was going to do this strong of a v-shaped recovery to be clear but we are doing this and drawing fibs since this low all the way back in June across the board for altcoins so QNT was a leader it bounced went to the 382 back tested that wick went all the way to the 1618 using the March April high we have XRP drawing the same fib remember QNT hit this level back in July the 382 XRP did not hit it until September and then again in October so running months behind QNT 
Then we took position in Casper, just buying, 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 crashes again, buying, 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 holding, got the push up to these wicks, just like XRP and QNT, right around that 382. So QNT wins in July, a couple months later, XRP wins in September, and then another month later, Casper wins. And so I'm just watching Algo and HBAR and scratch my head here. And looking at these levels, plotting the exact same Fibonacci March-April high before capitulation to that June low for this year, across the board. Remember, just once again for anybody new, 382 hit, 382 hit the wicks, 382 hit these wicks as well. Comparing HBAR and Algo, I'm doing that. And that's not guaranteed. I'm just trying to find as much confluence as possible, guys. Once again, I will make mistakes. I don't know everything, and I'm learning right there with you. And I personally thought that algo back here was going to shoot up to that level. So I'm just showing you another confluence. And we do have dozens of altcoins that made it to the 382, the 50%, even the 702 Fibonacci retracement. Whereas these assets are still relatively low. We can see algo is up about 44% from the June low of 27 cents. Now for HBAR, we can see the same thing. We have a wick all the way down at like 4.6 cents. That could absolutely get filled. This is a descending triangle. Typically, this is a very bearish pattern. But in my opinion, I'm at least hoping that we can get that push up. Whereas other assets, I mean, even Q&T got a speculative pump all the way to the 1618. Whereas XRP and Casper came from that low and came up to the 382. That would still be over a 100% move. And notice this wick right there on the 382. Algo has a wick right there on the 382. What do we notice here? QNT has the wick on the 382. It was tested. XRP has the same wick that was tested. And Casper has the same wick up there that was tested right next to the 382. So that's what I'd personally be watching for. And yes, anything can happen in any crypto market, guys. HBAR could absolutely crash here. It's a descending triangle. We could fall right out of this range. Anything is possible in crypto, especially in this global macroeconomic environment. So if you're looking for somebody to tell you exactly what to do, this is the wrong channel. What I want to encourage you to do is learn how to look at some of these confluences, go on TradingView, which is completely free, and start learning as much as possible. Don't just study the fundamentals for a project. Do not just study the technicals. You want to combine and here's a few months back as well. We have Ethereum Classic reaching the 786, if not a little higher. We have Dagger Constellation reaching the 382. We have QNT back when it was only at the 618 before coming up much higher. And these are on the candle bodies on the three day, but still the same Fibonacci setup. And then HBAR was just doing nothing. Remember, it was listed on Coinbase twice and they did it wrong. So we had little speculative pumps, we had dumps, and it's just been arranging at those levels, doing absolutely nothing. So once again, HBAR is yet to move, but it's also in a descending triangle. So if you're bearish, I completely get it. This is not financial advice. And once again, for anybody new to the channel, I've been trading and owning HBAR since launch in 2019, Algo since 2019, XRP since 2017, Casper since 2021. I own all four of these alts. No, I'm not paid by any companies or people to discuss them. I'm just a fan and I follow these projects closely. So I'm just trying to stick to utility projects that I believe in that have millions of dollars in funding. Once again, I'm not a crypto influencer that is flexing in front of Lamborghinis like you see on Twitter. I don't care about that. I'm not pumping meme coins. You guys decide for yourselves. And here's an example of QNT on the weekly reaching the P pivot right there, the Fibonacci pivot. You know, API 3 is still relatively low. We got a little push, which is great. HBAR hasn't done anything. And then just comparing the weekly RSI, the momentum. The best time to look at an alt is when the RSI is way down here, not when it's getting close to overbought. That gets a little risky. So personally, I'm looking for altcoins that are utility based at these lower levels. If you are a bear and you think that Bitcoin goes lower, then I wouldn't be buying right now. I'd be waiting and just trying to have cash ready. And me personally, because I don't know the exact future, we could have bottomed or we have another leg lower. Anything is possible. And anybody that tells you this will happen doesn't know what they're talking about. They will be humbled by life eventually. And I've been humbled. I've been wrecked many times. I've had hundreds of failures, but I've still had a few home runs over the last five years and that made up for everything. And meanwhile, while Algorand is the sponsor for the World Cup, one of the biggest events in the world, it seems like nobody cares, and Dogecoin ended up just doing a huge parabolic move, using the March-April high all the way up to the 786. Absolutely insane. So I know people say, yeah, Doge has utility, you know, thanks to Elon Musk and different integrations in the future. Entirely possible. I will just never own Doge, and I'm sorry. And the last chart we're sharing is the Bitcoin price chart. So we have Bitcoin futures gaps that are open. And FYI, there are gaps right under $10,000 for Bitcoin. The question is, do we close those gaps now or do we have a rally before closing those gaps? 
Notice that we have this triple bottom right here, one, two, three, and it's essentially on the 382 Fibonacci retracement using the same fib from the March April high to the June low that I showed you that Casper, XRP, and QNT hit to perfection, whereas Algo and HBAR are still down here. They haven't done much. So very interesting. And with additional confluences, remember QNT hit the 1618, which is just nuts. And of course, with a smaller market cap and a smaller circulating supply, and that made it very possible with a little volume and we can see two open gaps on the bitcoin cme futures that i've shared a few times on twitter and i just marked those gaps open for the bitcoin cme futures chart you can go on trading view and type in the ticker btc1 exclamation point you'll see an open gap right around 28,000, along with 34,800. And also with Arrington XRP Capital, so I was watching an old video I did in 2019 going over some of his investments, and I saw Casper there. Um, it was a 2019 YouTube video. And remember, he was backing XRP Capital, Algorand, and Moonbeam. Now, Glimmer has dumped very hard. I talk about Glimmer, but I'm much more interested right now, right or wrong, with Casper, since it's been going for just over a year. Glimmer was distributed on every exchange in January. Now, I'm not bashing it. It's just still very early, and I want to make sure it's entirely out of its distribution phase before I take a position it could be bottomed but I don't know that so going over some of his portfolio on arringtoncapital.com we'll click portfolio and we can see Casper should be here and LimeWire remember LimeWire is on Elgarand now which is crazy Proppy, Marlin and Casper Labs so some investments flop and some do very well. So of course, you know, seeing Casper on that back in 2019 and anybody that studied Ethereum back in the day or even in 2018 with that paper published going over Casper or the CBC specification. So that's one thing that Casper is actually trying to achieve on its own layer one instead of relying directly on Ethereum. So when you're looking at projects, be sure to check out some of their investors. I know that CoinMarketCap is not the best, but you can see some of their investors in different funds that backed them as well. Um, we know that Draper, Tim Draper, billionaire backed Casper, also at the World Economic Forum. But when Casper is speaking at the World Economic Forum in Switzerland, and it is the only cryptocurrency acknowledged on IBM.com. I know IBM is on Hedera's governing council, but notice Casper is the only asset that got a special shout out from the VP of Blockchain Services right here, talking about Casper Lab and their partnership and they demonstrated this at the world economic forum side by side crack in the exchange and verizon one of the global telecom companies we have this group i don't know how to pronounce it i'm going to say advasa right here and this is actually based in tokyo will exhibit at money 2020 the world's largest fintech conference in vegas and what's interesting is they partnered with us-based partner ip we whose platform basis adopt on Casper blockchain will formally launch its groundbreaking EWA technology with the blockchain that is without sacrificing the essential components of usability, cost, decentralization, or security on the U.S. market at Money 2020. We have the Casper Lab CTO and co-founder Meta Parlikar right here speaking at the LA Blockchain Summit discussing upgradable NFTs. We have Tim Draper, another billionaire, backing Casper right here at the LA Blockchain Summit. And also Scott Walker, who is an early Ethereum investor. And some of these founders and co-founders, guys, were the first people in crypto, like mining Bitcoin early days and here before even Ethereum was founded. So they're very smart people. And same goes for Vitalik or Charles Hoskinson. And remember this recent interview with Neve of Casper discussing millions of IPOE patents as NFTs are going to be minted and on the Casper network or Casper's blockchain. You can type in IPWE and Casper, read about some of their blogs as well, um, intellectual property and patents on Casper's blockchain. This is what I call actual utility and actual adoption, creating a chain of custody solution right here and battle testing it and making sure that it's built so that they can properly scale and put millions of more patents on top of Casper's blockchain. And guess what? Since they're NFTs, they can be upgradable. You cannot do that on Ethereum. So using blockchain technology, this enables traditional patents to be transacted. This could be licenses, sales, acquisitions, any type of intellectual property. It empowers new classes of transactions that are not just monetary value transactions. This is reporting, financing, insurance, any type of message. So this is one small reason why a lot of us get so hyped about blockchain because we see the possibility because we understand that almost everything is a transaction. Now, based in Switzerland, Switzerland is a very regulatory friendly country, of course, and they've already declared XRP to not be a security connected to the Swiss Digital Exchange. And with the new upcoming Casper 2.0, the Zug protocol, think Zug Switzerland, will introduce a faster, more secure successor to the current highway consensus protocol. So a few new features include reduced block time, increased throughput, stabilized gas fees with predictability, by the way, a simplified user interface with contracts that pay for themselves. 
Let me repeat that. Casper has contracts that can pay for themselves in much cleaner code, which will simplify future maintenance. And you can build on Casper with essentially any programming language, rather than if you wanted to build on ETH or other networks, you might have to learn you know, two or three programming languages. It makes it really hard, and the barrier to entry is just too high for a normal developer that has mad skills to come and start building on blockchain. Casper is opening the door for millions of developers to come, and that will massively contribute to Web3 for enterprise use cases. Everybody hates on Ripple the company and XRP, but the thing is that Ripple, the company, is the one that's building the bridges and the financial infrastructure so that banks, FIs, money service businesses can use crypto with the Ripple liquidity hub. That is good for XRP, but guess what? That is good for Ethereum, Bitcoin, every single altcoin out there. They are building bridges to connect all of this, the legacy and the new. All right, rant over there. Really quick, shared by X underscore Anderson, a must follow in the crypto space on Twitter. I loved his blogs, especially in 2018, going over XRP. Um, you know, big fan and great researcher for XRP, XDC, WTK, and of course, QNT. And he's going over the swift migration. So this is not financial advice. And it's crazy to see this year, all the Bitcoin YouTubers are talking about assets and ISO compliance, which we talked about years ago when Ripple, the company, was the first to join the governing body for ISO standards and QNT created its own. But anyways, guys, ISO is just messaging. You can go right to Swift.com and you can read about different deadlines, different migrations and different estimated dates. Once again, a crypto asset, even XRP, is not technically ISO compliance. It's more so referring to the infrastructure behind it. So if I ever say XRP or ALGO is ISO compliance, I'm referring to the infrastructure behind it, not the token itself. Sharing some screenshots, we can see the start date of this migration is March 20th, 2023 will be definitive. And right on their website, even he shares right here, and this is active since August 2022. So starting from August 2022, on opt-in basis, you can join, but March 2023 for general availability. Now this is messaging. This is not settlement. Settlement is what we're interested in if you're you know, speculating with XRP or other assets. But this is still a good thing. And we want interoperability. We want a similar standard across the board. So if they can work on messaging to have a similar standard, let's hope that we can work on the next level and maybe settlements technology having a similar standard. And don't just rely on me or any other silly YouTuber. You can go to swift.com. You can come up to standards and click the ISO standard and read more about it. You can see about ISO and get ready for this migration, even past webinars and the FAQ. Another example right here, we have Javier. So check this out, hybrid networks. And this is a video that was shared on YouTube, the new reality of interoperability between private and public networks. IBM and Casper Labs right here with permissioned and public chains to drive Web3 adoption, interoperability. Now, IBM is, of course, on Hedera's governing council. And Casper and Hedera are extremely legitimate. IBM partnering with a variety of groups, even you know Stellar back in the day. I'm just looking at all of these companies future proofing because they don't know the one winner or they don't know maybe the top 20 or 50 winners. So they want to look at all of the technology and do a variety of proof of concepts and imagine a collaboration between these two, Casper and HBAR. I think that would be awesome. I was referencing Swirls as well because they're down in this video. They're also a governing council member and a node that you can stake your HBAR to. And Hyperledger Foundation is freaking massive. Once again, you can just go through here. You can look at the group that was here before the Federal Reserve. You can look at a variety of central banks. You can see Deutsche Telekom and T-Mobile, Filecoin, Hedera, Casper Labs, R3, Quant, Ripple, Sora Mitsu, which actually, guess what, was on a document I saw in Casper's DeFi ecosystem. And it's so funny to see comments from people that know nothing about Casper, and yet Siemens, one of the largest companies in the world, was doing a hackathon with Casper's blockchain. Why? And remember, Verizon was side-by-side -side presenting with them at Davos. And maybe I'm just over speculating. You even have Energy Web. Remember that BlackRock, one of the biggest asset managers, actually shouted Energy Web out. IBM right there as well, JP Morgan, Boo. In the BSN, this is the blockchain based service network. You can see Hong Kong and China. I'd encourage you guys to look at the BSN and Casper Labs partnership, both on Hyperledger, and they actually minted their agreement as an NFT. BSN has deployed over 120 public city nodes across China. So Casper has ties in Southeast Asia. We have connections to Telangana throughout India. You have, of course, the UAE. We have the United States. I'm just very impressed. And of course, Switzerland, which you could consider all of Europe as they shared. They're working with some of the largest European organizations. And Casper was chosen as the blockchain of choice for the city of Fuzhou in China. Notice their service provider is the blockchain service network. 
Next up with HBAR, friendly reminder, we had a few big things going on, and while Dogecoin does a multiple 100% move, we have HBAR doing nothing. We have a $583 plus billion dollar asset manager, Aberdeen, join Hedera's governing council. You can read more about that. We already did videos on that. We have HBAR with the Hatch Accelerator, with 20 startups building on top of Hedera. And I thought a long time ago when they announced the uh, DeFi launchpad, there was going to be a lot of demand coming to Hedera with companies building on them. I still believe that, but man, it's taking a long time. Um, also, you know, the drone use case we've gone over as well, looking at air taxis and drones with the UK government building on Hedera. And my neighbor's chihuahua is going crazy right now, so sorry for the noise. Um, total value locked. We'll go over this Hedera report. This is on, not DeFi Llama, oops. This is on Masari.io, the report State of Hedera Q3. The HBAR Foundation committed $360 million to ecosystem projects. So I know we're not happy about price performance. I'm not either. You know, I've been holding and stacking for a long time, for months, you know, four or five months, and we haven't done much. The fact that people are gambling on microcaps and they bash me for talking about HBAR. Hopefully you understand why I'm supporting and looking at projects like this, because crypto is risky enough. I don't want to throw big money in something I don't think will survive. And I think HBAR will. Committed $360 million to ecosystem projects. Ripple alone committed a quarter billion dollars for their NFT ecosystem. I feel safe in those projects for the long term. I know crypto is volatile. Yeah, it's scary. But hopefully you understand why I'm looking at this, because I'm looking for projects that have longevity and real employees. Ended Q3 with $100 million in total value locked in the world of DeFi. So steady growth and big shout out to Saucer Swap and other DEX. And we can see that's a 171% increase quarter over quarter. You're seeing net worth growth activity, things like that. So like fundamentally, I think HBAR is strong. You have DeFi, you have an NFT marketplace, you have all types of things being built and a variety of companies building on them to launch solutions. So hopefully you understand, no, I'm not just shilling HBAR because it has no fundamentals. I'm discussing HBAR because of a variety of things. You know, LG, one of the biggest companies in the world, they announced the launch of LG Art Lab, an NFT marketplace built on Hedera that will enable LG smart TV owners to discover, buy, and sell Hedera NFTs directly from their TVs. We have native staking live, NFT activity all-time high. Once again, I'm bullish long-term, not financial advice. Anything can happen in crypto. Shout out to Cowboy Crypto right here, showing this old clip of the CEO of Swift back in the day. This is Godfrey LeBrant, I believe, alongside Brad Garlinghouse at the Paris FinTech Forum. So this went viral a long time ago, but, you know, as he said, there are ways that Ripple could work with Swift. And of course, you know, Godfrey, he's just a puppet in my opinion, probably didn't like that. <laughs> but I do like how confident Brad is next to him. Also, big thank you to XRP Marshall for tagging me and all of this amazing Casper research and partnerships. Like, I have a Casper folder because I pay for the $3 Twitter blue or whatever. So I'm just trying to save all of this to do dedicated videos on it. Once again, I appreciate you. Um, you know, you have Harrisoft and Casper, asset tracking on Casper. Um, so much to go over. So we'll do that in a future video. I can't keep up, man. Nucleus Finance is actually very interesting. And along with this group with Casper. So I'm very interested in this. Because this is about tokenization as a service. And just like with uh, Hedera, which is super legitimate, they have TOCO to tokenize real estate and anything in between and doing refinancing options. This all drives demand to HBAR if it's adopted in the future. And DLA Piper, one of the biggest law firms on Hedera's governing council, is also a Casper partner. So they're both going after enterprises, guys. I hold Casper and HBAR. HBAR is going after being more so an enterprise DAO distribution and governance between the largest organizations. I think that makes sense. We're not going to a 100% decentralized landscape. That doesn't make sense to me either. Even though I would like that, I don't think the future is going to be a perfect utopia. And I really hope it's not a dystopia either. And this is how I feel doing YouTube videos on anything in a bear market. The smartest crypto YouTubers, they leave when things get hard. They don't push through because all you do is get attacked by, you know, the cesspool on Twitter. Saw this guy, Nathan, sharing. We've shared before, you know, Bank of Italy with Algorand, by the way, but you can see this document he has. You can see Algorand right there. Um, target tips, huge connections to like XRP and Quant, arguably. Um, so just wanted to show that. We have mentioned, you know, Bank of Italy mentioning Algo before. You can type in uh, Kevin Cage, OMFIF, or follow uh, Darren.algo. He's awesome in this community. I just kind of repost this from time to time just to show, you know, Algo was chosen by FIFA. They have central bank digital currency pilots backed by MIT, founded zero knowledge proofs. Um, on the DMI Symposium with Ripple, Goldman Sachs, IBM, PayPal, um, the Swiss Digital Exchange, HSBC, and OMFIF on their website has Algo and Ripple. This is a $43 trillion think tank for the official monetary and financial institutions forum. 
And to everybody that made it this far, big thank you guys for the support. I hope that some of this information is helpful or will be helpful for you in the future to continue doing your own research. And I wanted to dedicate this video to my best friend, Kurt. And on this day, four years ago, he hung himself and he was found three days later in his apartment, definitely bringing back a lot of uh, flashbacks. So, you know, just wanted to say appreciate you guys, wanted to dedicate this video to him. And he was one of the most empathetic, genuine people I've ever met. Um, he was still a goofball, don't get me wrong, but, but he was a good person. And I know he touched a lot of lives. And I saw this on Instagram the other day. I don't talk much about it. Maybe I'll share some things on my Instagram story, but I, uh, I kind of keep it quiet since, you know, I do videos on crypto. But if you guys are ever struggling, please reach out to somebody. You know, I've been through a lot too, personally. I know we all have. And just as that fighter, Patty Pimblett said, I know I'd rather have my mate cry on my shoulder than go to his funeral next week. And, you know, I gave the eulogy at my mate's funeral. So please talk to somebody, please reach out. If you are, you know, drinking, if you're not exercising, you're not getting enough sleep and you're eating bad, you're not giving yourself a fighting chance. So love you guys. This video is dedicated to Kurt. Love you, bro. And until next time. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate hitting the like button and subscribing. Let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, my link tree is linked right in the top of this YouTube video description with all links, crypto resources, and discounts. I'll catch you in the next one.